Welcome to Samsung Games, the place to find new strategy games and welcome to my guide on headquarters in Unity of Command 2. So first of all, when you're inside in scenario, you can see the headquarters right over here. I, for example, have the British 8th Army and the US 5th Army and you can click on it and you're going to see it here. Then you're going to see a white range around it once you click on it and this is the range of the HQ. Why is the range important? What is important here is that only units in the range of its HQ can use its abilities and also only these units count for a level up of an HQ. So essentially every time a unit inside this range that belongs to the HQ, so if I have a unit that belongs to the other HQ, it's in the range, it's not going to count. If it does something like kill an enemy or something like that, it will give you experience to your HQ and if the HQ has enough experience, it will level up. You can see it right here. You can see your current XP, which is 34. And you can see the target, which is here, 145. So once I get that, I can level up my HQ. Now, every time you level up, you get three different options. The first option is always to get more command points. And the second and third options are to specialize in one of these abilities. Now, the options you get are only of abilities that you already know. You will not get an option for us uh, to learn a new ability that you don't have. So for example, I would not be able to get like a major river crossing because it's not something I know. So I can't get that in the HQ upgrade. I can only like specialize in something I don't know. For example, I could get an option to specialize in faint attack, which is good. And the specializing thing, what it does, it lowers the cost of the ability. So for example, right now faint attack costs two. If I specialize in it, it's gonna cost one. So you have the command points option, then you have the two specialization option. One of them is always going to be free, and one of them is going to cost you some prestige. Getting more command points always costs prestige. The total command points you can see over here, and you can use any combination of these abilities that are available on the unit. So for some of them, you might need something special. For example, to use suppressive fire, you need a specialist. Artillery specialist on this unit, I don't have artillery specialist, so I can use suppressive fire. But if you're capable of using that, you can use any of these abilities. So how do you learn a new ability? Well, that's when you jump to the conference room. Every around three scenarios, you get a new conference. And there you, in the conference, you can buy new cards, but you can also spend prestige to level up some sort of branch of your HQ. So each HQ has five branches. We have engineering, logistics, operation, intel, and force pool. And you can upgrade that in your conference window. I'm going to show you the window right now. You can also increase the total movement and range of the HQ. So let's start talking about some of these abilities. By the way, down on the bottom, you can see your current level. So you can see I'm two level in engineering, three in logistics, two in operation, two in intel, and once in force pool. Oh, also one more important point. What you get at which level is different their HQ. So for example, with the British HQ, you start with all the bridge abilities and you can see this little symbol here that's separating the, the levels. And on the next level, I get the entrenchment fortification. However, in the US HQ, on the first level, you only get a bridge destruction and repair and you do not get to build a new bridge. And then on the second level, you get creating a new bridge, entrenchment and also river crossing. So this is important that for sometimes it's going to be more beneficial to upgrade one HQ over other because it's going to give you better abilities. So let's go back to the British one and we're going to talk about engineering. So with engineering, first up, you have destroy bridge, repair bridge and create bridge. When do you want to create a new bridge? Well, when you're crossing a river without a bridge, it costs you all of your movement points. So that's very ineffective because it's going to cost you a lot of unnecessary points. For example, here I could move across the river, but that's it. I can't move anywhere further than that. Okay, so if you build a bridge, it's going to be much easier. When you build a bridge, the effect of the bridge is going to be shown upon the next turn. Next thing you can do is you can repair a bridge. This is going to be important with a railway supply. So for example, if you look over here, I have a railway, and if this bridge was destroyed, it, the supply wouldn't move through. It's not going to show you the effect of repairing the bridge until the next turn, so it's still going to show you as if it was unsupplied, but later on it's going to be supplied. Also, the range of the HQ does not go over the destroyed bridge very well as well so that's why another reason to just uh, repair a bridge as for a bridge destruction i'll be honest with you i haven't found it overly useful in any of the areas up to monte Cassino. the problem in destroying bridge is right you can see this bridge here right and there's also a bridge here 
I can only destroy the witch. I cannot destroy this one. That is because in order to destroy a bridge, you need you seem to need to own the hexes on both sides of the bridge. Which makes it really difficult because oh if you already own the hex of a both sides of the bridge, then destroying the bridge just means that you will destroy your own supply usually because you're already disrupting the enemy supply, so you don't need to destroy the bridge for that. So it hasn't seemed to be very useful for me. Next up, we've got Entrenchment and Fortification. Now, this is a pretty amazing ability. It allows you to entrench your unit by one level. So if it has nothing, it will get entrenched. If it has entrenched, it will get fortified. This gives you a defensive shift in combat. If you want to know more about combat, I have a guide on that. And that's really, really good. One thing, however, to watch out with Entrenchment is that different kind of attacks, they can destroy the unit's entrenchment. The only thing that doesn't destroy your own entrenchment is, I believe, suppressive fire. Yeah. Suppressive fire doesn't... Uh, suppressive fire and faint attack don't remove your entrenchment, but so, but it's a really cool ability if you need to hold on to any kind of a, an objective. You can use the entrenchment to really help yourself and protect it. Next up, we have river crossing. River crossing is... Um, Allows a unit to cross a major river, which would not be possible other otherwise. You cannot cross rivers into the mountain, alpine, or salt marshes. Now, the requirement to use a river crossing is that unit is not weak or green. Uh, you need an infantry unit, and units must have all MPs plus action points. There's also an extra ability after this, which is assault river crossing, which allows you to attack across a major river. Next up, we're going to jump towards the logistics. We have emergency supply, so this allows you to supply a unit. Very useful ability, probably going to be using it a lot. Next up is motor pool. This is very, very cool. This allows you to increase a movement of an infantry unit, gives you plus two. This can be useful to overrun enemy HQs. It can be just useful if you need to get your unit to somewhere uh, because it's an important part, it just doesn't have enough movement, so it can really help you out. It needs to be an infantry non mobile unit. AP is not locked or used, and it must be in turn passable to mobile. So, an example of a non mobile terrain is a mountain. Next up, we've got create supply dump. This allows you to oversupply a unit by giving it a supply dump mark, and essentially means that on the first turn it's out of supply, it's going to remain in supply, and only after that it starts counting down the units of out of supply. However, the disadvantage of this is that if a unit moves or attacks, the supply dump is abandoned and the marker is removed. So a time when this would be useful is if you know that an enemy is going to flank you. For example, here in this particular map, the people in Casino they might know that I'm going to try to flank them around. So it would be a good idea for them to use their HQ to oversupply the unit on Casino. And then when I'm flanking, flanking them, they're like, I don't care. I have an extra turn of supply. Bye bye. You know, so if the enemy did that, we would be in a world of trouble. Next up, let's talk about operation. Now, here we have a lot of different abilities. I'm going to talk to you about them fairly quickly here. I might do a separate guide focusing on that in detail because there's a lot to say here. So first of all, we have suppressive fire. For that, you need an artillery specialist. The example is the purple thing with the dot in the middle or this this thing like M7 Priest also gives you artillery. It allows you to attack an enemy. Your unit takes little or no losses, so like you don't get hurt much. And uh, this only suppresses the enemy units. You cannot kill an enemy unit like this. Next up, you have no retreat. This essentially just means that in the retreat table, if you check out the, my combat video, you know what I'm talking about. You have less of a chance of retreat, but in return you take higher losses. So this can be a beneficial if you need to hold on to a certain objective. However, since of you have the higher losses, your unit might just die, so it's not the greatest thing. Faint attack. Faint attack is interesting. It's essentially a roll where you have usually a 70% chance to suppress one of enemy units and 30% chance to suppress two of enemy steps, sorry, not units. And it's going to suppress one of the unit on the attacker. Sometimes if the enemy is on a good terrain, you just have 100% chance to suppress one of his units. You can simply hover it over the enemy to see which option it is. So if I go for... Faint attack here, I can see, okay, so because they are in, uh, in entrenched and in a forest, uh, I have 100% chance of su suppressing one of its unit. Uh, I don't get the 70-30 as you would get otherwise. So it doesn't seem that useful, right? But it can be pretty useful if sometimes if the enemy is very well fortified in a very good terrain, even suppressive fire can essentially be useless. 
So in those cases, you want to use fin attack because fin attack is just like a certain one or two suppression. No matter what terrain, no matter how entrenched they are, all of that is can be ignored. Next up, we've got uh, set piece attack. Now, this allows you to lower the enemy entrenchment by one level. If you have engineers, this will help you. You will be more likely to lower their entrenchment. It also allows you to entrenchment them by two, not one. Again, for more details, we can talk. And you need uh, infantry with active artillery specialist. And if you have an extra engineer, it's going to make it much easier. So again, more details on, on the other guide that I plan to do. Next up, we've got a rear guard, which... Um, it's kind of like the opposite to no retreat. The idea is that you will immediately retreat if an enemy attacks you. Oh, as a result, the enemy attack will resolve as a feint attack. So essentially, it's only going to give you one or two suppression, and that's it. So this can be pretty useful. However, it means that your unit will re retreat with full movement points to its own HQ. And uh, the exception is if the enemy uses a suppressive fire or if there is no retreat route for you, then it's going to resolve as a normal attack. Uh, finally, there's counterattack here, which I don't have here, but it allows you to counterattack the enemy. It just switches the attacker and defender position, also gives you a slight shift bonus because it's like a surprise attack. And you only do the counterattack if it's beneficial for you. What does that mean? Sometimes when you hover over an attack on the enemy and see three zero, so you just die and do nothing to them. If that's the case, you will not counterattack them. The enemy cannot retreat as a result of your counterattack. Now, some tips when it comes to this is you would I, you always want to try to do set piece attack if the enemy is entrenched before you use suppressive fire. If both entrenchment and sup suppressive fire have a very low chance of succeeding, you want to faint attack the enemy until you suppress enough of your units that the other abilities will be useful. Next up, let's talk about recon in fours. It's allowed to capture hex in enemy territory without getting caught in the zone of control. It gives you sort of animation where the unit will sort of jump into that hex and back. Units with the recon specialist can do this without spending their action point. The enemy hex cost must be lower than two movement points for mobile movement. So you won't be able to use it on every hex. It does not remove your entrenchment. Next up, we have Intel. Intel determines the visibility for a fog of war. And finally, we have the Force Spoon, which allows you to deploy and reorganize steps. So deploy means that a unit that uh, or a step that you have in reserves, you can add to some sort of unit. Reorganize means that you can take a step from some sort of unit. For example, we could take the, the priest specialist away and then we could uh, deploy it in the HQ on the next turn. Your stragglers are always traveling towards the HQ and once they get there, they will become reorganized and you can deploy them. However, it will cost you your command point. So uh, the next ability in Force Pool is Transfer Step. It allows you to move one active step or specialist between two adjacent subordinate units. So this means that instead of moving it to your HQ and then on the next turn deploying it to the unit, you can just do it immediately, which I think is pretty cool. Then you have security unit deploy up to three infantry steps from the HQ force pools as a security unit. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't tested this out yet as it's not unlocked, but from my understanding, and if you guys have done that, you could write it in the comment to confirm, what this allows you to do, and this is pretty amazing, is actually create a new unit because up to this point, everything we have been doing, like deploying, reorganizing, even the transferring step, just allows you to move steps between different units. Your unit, what it does, it allows you to take three infantry steps and create a new actual infantry unit. If you click on the HQ, you can see the complete range and you can also move the HQ to within that range. Now, it's a certain amount of movement points that you can use to move the HQ. Uh, why is it a good idea to move the HQ? Well, like I said, you only get experience and I can only use the HQ if your units are in range. So sometimes you want to move the HQ along if your units are moving somewhere. If you move on, on the current turn, you won't be able to use any ability. So I'm going to show it to you with the US HQ. If I move it, it's going to spend all of its points. So you cannot use any of its abilities. And once you move, it sort of suppresses a level of an HQ. So for example, for next turn, we'll have suppressed logistics and uh, intel. Okay. All right, next up, we're going to talk about how to capture an enemy HQ. So first thing you got to know is that uh, 
the HK has three extra movement points. That's going to add it to the hex it's on. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to step on it. But once you successfully do it, you can overrun the HQ. There will be no combat between your unit and the HQ. However, your unit has to be non-weak. The HQ they just could overrun will retreat. If there's no retreat retre route, it will be destroyed. And it will uh, suffer two levels of suppression of its branch. It suppress one level of operation, suppress one of another branch at random. It will get uh, unsuppressed after one in supply turn. Now, sometimes what the enemy does, he places his HQ on a really important objective, which makes it really difficult for you to get there because it gives that uh, three extra movement point to step into it. So it's really difficult and a lot of movement points. Way to counteract that is either to use tanks, just to generally have more movement points, or going to use the motor pull up. All right, I think that's it for now.